Hey bird nerds, how's it going? It's Chris here, gonna bring you guys a, another video. Um, as you know, if you guys have been watching the videos, we've had a lot of zebra finch videos coming up, or that we've been I've been posting, uh, Rosie Bork videos, all that stuff. Um, and I haven't posted a video on Goldian finches lately, so I thought I would uh, get a quick video out there for you guys and uh, give you kind of a sneak peek of what is starting to happen. Uh, I have been able to, uh, or I did pair up some of my Goldian Finches. I've got one, two, so we've got one, two, three, four, five pairs set up. And then I do have a male blue back right here who uh, I've been nursing back to health uh, for, geez, probably the last month and a half. Uh, he had it like an eye infection and I think we've been cleared for about a week. So I was just keeping him in there uh, just for safe keepings and then we'll uh, pair him up uh, with a yellow back hen that I have. Um, that'll be really pretty. So super excited about that. Hopefully, uh, we'll get, get some, some really cool babies going this year. We've got some really good pairings. So what I wanted to talk about today is just some basic tips. I'm going to give you guys five breeding tips, uh, with your Goldian finches. I know lots of times Goldian finches sometimes can be a little picky. Sometimes they can be a little finicky. Uh, sometimes... People have issues with chick tossing, uh, pairs not mating properly, a whole array of things with, with Goldian Finches. So I'm hoping to cover a few of those uh, within these five basic tips that, that I give you guys. And hopefully it'll be a benefit to you. And like I said, this just gives you guys a, a sneak peek of some videos to come. Obviously, you're seeing that, that I have them set up and uh, getting ready to breed. I do have some hens that are actually already laying eggs in the nest. So we've got some good things going for us right now. I'm really excited for it. And hopefully uh, we can bring you guys along for the ride. So, so the first tip that I want to talk about is, and it, it's really simple, but it's important making sure you have a male and female. Okay. Um, males have a brighter plumage and we'll zoom in here on these guys because they'll give us a good a good view of it so the male he's right there to the right the hen she's down there on the bottom okay so males have a darker brighter vibrant plumage okay you can see how his green his his yellow on his breast it's a darker yellow if you look at the female hers is a light yellow Okay, her green back, it's a little dark right here, so it's a little bit hard to tell. Her her back is, is not um, a vibrant dark green like the male's is. We'll come down here. Look at these guys in here. Let's see if we can uh, give you guys a good view here. So you can see my redhead male. Let's sit here for a sec. Hopefully he'll uh, calm down. He's not going to calm down, is he? So he just has some brighter colors. Um, their plumage is a, is a lot more vibrant and colorful, right? And then the hen there, she is a black head, green back, purple breast. If you can see her colors, they're just a little bit more dull. They're not as bright and vibrant, okay? Um, so that's one way to tell to tell if you have a male or female, okay? Um, it is important to make sure you have that, right? If you got two males or if you have two females, um, it's hard to tell. Um, sometimes on your yellow back, so you can see here, sometimes that's a little bit more difficult for people to tell uh, male and female on your yellow backs. Uh, this is a female here, yellow back. And she has some really bright plumage. And one thing that confuses uh, breeders is her beak does not turn black like a normal female's beak does. If we come up here to my black face hen, you can see her beak is black, okay? 
yellow backs, the hen's beaks do not turn black. They turn like a, a red color, okay? And so sometimes that can be a little bit confusing for beginner breeders on the golden finches. Uh, so just make sure you're aware of that. Make sure you have a male, make sure you have a female, make sure they like each other. Um, and we'll kind of get into that here in a, in a little bit here. Um, but it's important that they bond properly and are, um, you know, a true pair or else they're just going to bicker and argue and they're not going to give you uh, any good babies. So, so the next tip I want to talk about is the breeding condition. So it's important that your golden finches are in tip top breeding condition and typically your golden finches will come into condition a couple months after they molt, after they have their yearly adult molt, okay? And that's really important that they have the molt, which I said, like I said, is once a year. Typically they molt around the time that they were born. So if your golden finches were born in July, lots of times they'll molt around July. Or if your golden finch was born in December, lots of times they molt around December. Most of my golden finches, because I breed them in the fall time and chicks are hatching between around, you know, October, November, that's usually when they molt for me. So it's just something to, to keep in mind there, make sure they're in, in good breeding condition following the molt. Some other ways to tell that your finches are in, in breeding condition, and this is what I had mentioned earlier, is your males, their beaks will become a pearly white color, okay? And then your hens, their beaks will go a black color. So you can see my blue back hen there. Her beak is a black color, okay? And it'll get even more black than that. So if you look at my male here, my blue back male, you can see his beak is that pearly white color, okay? So when your males are in breeding condition or in top breeding condition, their beaks turn that white color, okay? And that's really important to note as well. If we come down here, look at this male. Once he turns, you can see he's got a nice pearly white beak. He's gonna be right there in the light for us so we can't see it very good. He's got that nice white beak and he's got the red tip there at the end of it. So, so that's a good sign to look for if your males are in good breeding condition. My female here, if they'll sit still for me long enough, you can see that her beak is nice and black. Okay, almost as black as her face. You can see the male's got that pearly white beak and he's he's an orange tip male. So, he's, so he has a little bit of orange there on the end of his beak. Okay, so those are good signs to look for that your birds are in good breeding condition. Also, the last sign to look for that they're in good breeding condition also is their feather plumage. If you look at these guys, they're, they have great feather plumage, right? They're not missing feathers. They're not bald around the head. They're not molting, okay? They've already molted. They look beautiful. They look super ready for breeding, okay? Look at my male here. He's not missing any feathers. He's nice and pretty, okay? Look at our birds up here. Nice and pretty, ready to breed, okay? So all of those are signs that your bird is in great or tip top breeding condition. If we look at our pair down here, they're nice, beautiful colors. You can see that hen, her beak is almost as black as her mask on her face, okay? She's definitely ready to breed. And if we look in here, I don't know if they've got anything in there. Oh, it looks like she had an egg that got broken open. So we'll have to pull that out get that ready and that happens too uh, which is never good right so just some things to look for make sure that they are in good breeding condition so the next thing we want to look at or the third tip is that your golden finches are of the proper age many times people get super antsy right and they just want to breed no matter what the age is typically your golden finches uh, usually molt out between six to eight months old, sometimes a little quicker, sometimes a little bit later. And then people see that beautiful plumage and color. The birds think they're ready to breed, but they're still too young 
Um, and the reasons why they're too young is if you have a female who's eight months old wanting to breed, sometimes it's easier for her to get egg bound, okay? And when the birds get egg bound, it increases their chances of dying if they can't pass those eggs. If your males are young, you know, under a year old, they act a lot like teenagers, meaning they want to continuously just build the nest, even if egg, there's eggs or chicks in there. He's not very um, attentive to the female, um, doesn't pay as close attention to the chicks. That's when you get a lot of chick tossing is when the birds are really young and inexperienced and they toss the chicks because they're not quite sure what they are or they're just ready to breed again and lay eggs again, right? So um, it, proper age is really important. Uh, make sure your birds are 12 months old and older. One thing, one rule of thumb that I usually try to do is I try to, ex to pair up a more experienced bird with a younger bird. So if we have an example here, this male, he's two years old, okay? He raised the clutch last year with the breeder that I bought him from. And then my hen here, this will be her first breeding year, okay? So we've got a more experienced male with a younger hen. If we come and look over here, I have my blue back hen. So this will be her second year of breeding and my yellow back male, this will be his first year. So the hen already has one year under her belt of breeding and is a little bit more experienced, knows what to do, okay? Same goes for down here. My male, this is his third year breeding for me and this will be the hen's first year, okay? So we got a more experienced male with a less experienced hen. It, they just seem to balance each other out a little bit better when you have at least one of the birds that's more experienced. If, if you have both your male and female, it's their second and third year breeding, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, but if you have two young birds breeding for the first time, you may have chicks tossed or they may not feed the chicks on that first clutch just because they're both so young and inexperienced. So age is, a, is important. Make sure that your birds are the proper age and that you have them paired up appropriately with each other, okay? Just trying to think anything else that I had with that. Um, one thing that you can take note of is if you have a bonded pair, Goldie and Finches, they're not very affectionate. You won't see them preening each other. Um, you won't see the males feeding the females. Um, really the best way that you can tell if, if they are bonded is you don't see any beak fencing. If they're beak fencing, that means they're not really liking each other. Uh, when the male does his singing to the female, uh, she'll use, she'll respond back to him by either crouching down and letting him mount her or she'll point her tail towards him and kind of vibrate it back and forth or shake her head as well, kind of mimicking the male. That's a sign that they've accepted each other. Um, and then also if they roost next to each other, that's a good sign that they're a bonded pair. So if you don't see any of that stuff happening dur during the day and you're not quite sure if your pair is bonded or not, Go in at night when the lights are off, when the birds are roosting, or when the when the lights are about to turn off and the birds are settled in for the night and see if they're sitting next to each other. Because lots of times that's a good sign that, they, that they're bonded, that they tolerate each other, and that they are um, good to go. So fourth thing I wanna talk about is their diet and temperature. So diet is important. Um, for Goldian finches, you want to make sure that you're giving them egg food. You know, if, if you have them set up, so like I, how I have them set up right now, I'm giving them egg food one to three times a week. So about every other day. Um, I've increased the calcium intake. So I have some liquid calcium that I supply in the water every other day on the days that I don't provide egg food, just to help build up those calcium reserves for my females. Um, and kind of prep them, getting them ready to, to lay eggs, right? So I feed them one to three days egg food, and then every once in a while, I'll throw in some extra veggies, maybe some extra cucumbers or apples, some fruits, you know, things like that uh, for them to eat during the day. When they have chicks in the nest, I give them egg food every day. 
I only give them enough to last them for a couple hours so that the egg food doesn't spoil, okay? But I give them egg food every day for them to feed the chicks. That's helped reduce the amount of chick tossing that I've had. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't had very many pairs that have tossed chicks in the last several years um, because I, because they have food in the nest that they don't feel like there's a, a shortage of food or anything like that and they have any reasons to toss the chicks. Um, I also provide millet spray for the birds. Uh, when they're breeding, uh, usually I'll throw one in once a week. Uh, they really love the millet spray. I give them a mixed variety of seed of seed every day of different small millets and different seeds that's part of their daily diet. Um, Golian finches can be picky eaters. So one thing to, to make note is if they don't eat your egg food, don't get discouraged. Um, if they're still showing breeding signs and laying eggs in the nest and, and hatching the chicks out, but they're still not eating the egg food, keep it available to them. Some pairs may not eat the egg food at all and, they, and they'll raise chicks successfully. Um, but just keep in mind that it is important to have it available for them uh, if, if that is an option. My Goldian Finches, when they're not in these breeding cages, they're out in the aviary and they're with all my other birds and all those birds eat the egg food and love it. And so they've kind of taught my Goldian Finches that egg food is good. And lots of times my golden finches, they won't eat the egg food until they're getting ready to lay eggs in the nest or they have chicks in the nest. Um, and then they'll start eating it in greater amounts or quantities. So don't get discouraged if they don't eat it. Keep it available, keep trying it, keep trying different things to, to pique their interest, get them wanting to try it. Um, if you have other birds, put those birds with them when they're not breeding so that they can show them that the egg food is good and teach them to eat it and, and all of that. So hopefully that'll guys help you out as far as the diet goes. Temperature wise, you just wanna make sure, you know, Goldians breed best, you know, between 70 to 85 degrees, that's optimal temperatures. They will breed when it's hotter than that. I mean, mine are starting to breed right now and laying eggs and we're still in the mid 90s. I usually like to wait a little bit longer, but they're, they're not wanting to wait. They're ready to go and they're laying eggs on the floor. So I decided to pair them up. So um, last tip that I want to give you guys, tip number five is your breeding setup. So your nest boxes, your nesting material, what they like to nest in. I mean, there's so many different options out there. I, I'm not gonna say there's one correct nest box to give your Goldian Finches. I've seen Goldian Finches breed in nest boxes like I have here. I've seen Goldian Finches breed in the wicker baskets that I have. I've seen people hollow out logs and use that as a nesting material. I've seen Goldian Finches build a nest in a bush and breed in there and so, or raise the, their family in there. So there's so many different options. Um, I would just say make sure you have something that's big enough. Um, I typically go for the little bit larger finch nest boxes. They seem to like that. Uh, I Some of the nesting material that I do provide is cocoa fiber. I, I like to shred up paper towels. I used to have some paper towel here and just kind of rip it up and throw it in their cage and they like to build it. I have some males that are really good at building nests and love to build nests. And I have other males that don't even touch their nesting material. So again, like I said, don't get discouraged if they don't build a nest. Lots of times if I, you know, be observant, look at there. Lots of times if they don't build a nest, I'll go in and I'll just place some, see she's got an egg in there. I'll place some nesting material in there. And now that I see an egg in there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna build this nest up a little bit more. I'm gonna add a lot more uh, paper towel in there, add, you know, a good cushion bottom and then kind of put a, an indent in the middle so the eggs stay in there in the middle and they don't get spread around the nest box. I'm gonna kind of top this off for them uh, to make sure that they have a proper nest and that we don't have any issues with the eggs rolling around and, and not staying warm and, and that sort of thing. So um, 
you may have some that build nests, you may have some that don't. So just make sure you provide a nest box. Make sure you provide nesting material to allow them that opportunity to build. And then also make sure that you provide privacy for these guys. Goldie and Finches um, are not as open to nest checks and people hanging around them all day as say maybe the zebra finches. The golden finches do allow you to check the nest and check the babies. Um, but if you have people constantly around them, kids constantly screaming or touching the cages or running by the cages, it's going to stress the birds out. They're probably not likely to successfully raise a clutch for you. They may sit on the eggs and then they'll toss the chicks or they may sit on the eggs for a few days and then they'll jump off the eggs. Okay, there's so many things that, that could happen with just not giving that privacy. So try and put a cage up in the corner so they feel safe, give them a nest box, some nesting material, and try and just kind of have a hands-off approach. Watch them from a distance. Make sure you know that you have a bonded pair. Make sure that they're interested in breeding, but don't be touching their nest boxes all the time. Don't be, you know, that sort of stuff and you shouldn't have an issue with them tossing the chicks or you shouldn't have an issue with them uh, abandoning their eggs, that sort of thing. So hopefully this will help you guys. Hopefully this will just give you some ideas, some starting points uh, to setting up your Goldian Finches. Like I said, there are five simple tips just to get your Goldian Finches going and hopefully help you raise a successful clutch. If you guys have any comments, leave them down below. If you have any questions or concerns that you want me to answer about Goldian Finches and how to pair them up, how to set them up, uh, leave some comments down below, share the video, get some other people that you know that have Goldian Finches to, to watch this. Like, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you guys watching this. Hopefully, uh, we'll uh, keep the success stories going and we'll have some Goldian babies here in the future to show you guys. We'll see you guys next time.